You're tuned in to the Development Tank Podcast with Peter Kelly. Welcome back to the Development Tank. Pumped to have you with us. I want to quickly go over what you can expect from this episode today. We've got Side Insiders, Superstar Gav, looking at a site in Ivanhoe that we purchased. It's a ripper, so keen to show you guys that. And we've got Project Snapshot with Claire, our head of projects here at Little Fish, on a site that we are increasing the value through development for sale. So that's a super exciting one. There's a lot of value in that one, so make sure you stick around for that. I wanna talk about a topic today, guys. Something come across my desk and I wanted to bring it to your attention. It's the expected rate cuts from the big four. So Bonnie, he'll have a snapshot of the big four and the expectations. Over the next 12 to 18 months, they're all tipping an average of about 1.1 or 1.2% interest rate cuts. You've even got Commonwealth Bank there tipping 1.5-ish over the next 13 months. So for me and what we're seeing out there in the landscape of this industry and the sentiment that we receive from all our leads and all our clients and all that sort of stuff, we can definitely sense that there's people coming back to the marketplace and it's no doubt it's because of this type of commentary. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. The big four are tipping over a percent over the next sort of 12 to 15 months. So interesting to see how that plays out. Doesn't always play out as they think. We're definitely seeing that sentiment of people wanting to enter back into the marketplace. So anyway, just wanted to talk about that because buying sites now, we talk 12, 18, 24 months down the track. I think it's going to be a different landscape. So I think we're going to see great buying at the moment when we look back in hindsight. So also, guys, want to get you across today in Side Insiders with Gav. We've got a site that we bought in Ivanhoe, a suburb that we know really well. Uh, we bought it some time ago, but definitely one we want to show you guys. And then in the following week, so next week, we'll be looking at the project snapshot of where that's up to. Now, that's in build. So remember, stick around for that one. Come back and watch that one because you'll get the feasibility of that today. And that brings me to, we dropped a case study this week. That's in Ivanhoe also. So that project has gone full circle. It was a success, really strong profit around that $600,000. And just circling back to that $600,000 in profit that was made on that Waterdale Road site. We just launched the Little Fish Network this week, littlefishnetwork.com.au. Please get in there. That's the support that essentially we gave the client, the everyday landowner at Waterdale Road that made those profits. So please get in there. We're helping everyday landowners do this stuff and put their self in the way of this good fortune. So please check it out. We'll see you in there. Claire's in there. Gab's in there. We're looking at sites. We're looking at projects. There's opportunities in there. Great advice to keep you flying straight and keep you heading on that path to financial freedom. So jump in there. Lots of value. Welcome back to Site Insiders. If you know, you know we've got Australia's number one site finder here, Gav. Uh, Gav, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. It's uh, been a yeah, busy week, actually. A busy week. We've had the Little Fish Network drop this week as well, which which you guys were probably more involved in the front end and the beta testing and, and even the building out of it. So Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, but now it's gone live and it looks good. Yeah, I'm probably on there daily, I reckon, um, adding... Yeah. Lots of information about sites I'm looking at. Um, once or twice a week, I put a new site in there and I you know, put a lot of detail in there around why we liked it, um, how the numbers stacked up, you know, if we if we got it, if we didn't. You know, I put in stuff, uh, I put sites on there as well that we don't get or we don't want. We, we look at really closely and we, we sort of do our due diligence, go through the, the, the positives and negatives and sometimes it might stack up really well but got too many red flags so we passed on it. Yeah, love it, love it. And yeah, for anyone out there inside that network, these are live opportunities. So some we pass on, like Gav said, but some can be purchased and uh, the network is live. So so if you see a site that you like, um, Gav, and, and, and it's not for one of our um, sort of paid up clients, our advocate clients, they'll go in there as, as opportunities for anyone to buy. So yeah. great value. And there's also an opportunity for people to, uh, put in their own sites as well if there's something they're looking at you know what do you think of this what do you think of that um, and people within the, within the community who are you know looking at these things all day every day as well have the opportunity to get involved in the conversation 
Yeah, love it. Heaps of value in there. Get along to it, littlefishnetwork.com.au. Now, Gav, we've got a site that we purchased a little bit ago. Yeah, this uh, was... Uh, it, is, it is one that I fancy, so that's why we put it on the list, but yep. keen to hear about how it all how it all come about. This one is in Ivanhoe, so it's 100 Hawker Street in Ivanhoe. So going into Landchecker, let's just sort of get an idea of where we are first. So if I zoom out here a bit, um, we can see that we're about seven and a half kilometres from the city, from the CBD, which is just over here so which is just over here it's uh, about seven and a half kilometers from the city coming in a bit closer we've got um, Thornbury secondary school there and this here is uh, Ivanhoe primary school and just up here is the site that you were talking about a little, little bit earlier yeah, thanks, Gav. Nice segue. But yeah, that is Waterdale Road. That's a three town hour site, as people can see. Comparatively speaking, the sites at Waterdale will be smaller dwellings, being the three, uh, and probably an inferior location, medium busy road, Waterdale Road, and getting a bit close to close to the industrial. So still, yeah. obviously, still a great great project, as we saw in the case study. But this one, I feel like it is a sweeter location. Yep, terrific. And look, a little bit further away, about 1.2 k's, you've got the, uh, the heart of uh, Ivanhoe train station and you know, great bunch of shops. It's where I started working for Littlefish. Actually, we used to have an office there. We did indeed. So yeah, Ivanhoe is close to our hearts and we do know it quite well and we are pretty, pretty bullish about it. So talk to me about the site itself. So getting in a bit closer to the site, we'll actually um, we'll get up the numbers here. So 640 square metres. Great frontage, 16.73 frontage, north-facing backyard. Let's just uh, get into the high res. Excellent frontage. There we go, and it looks like we're uh, off and running with we're our build running. as well. Um, but we'll get into that next week, guys. So remember, next week, project snapshot. There we go. Things are humming down there. Great to see the progress. Sorry, Gav. You're right. So, yeah, look, no trees in the sites. I think it's probably got 40% coverage, which is um, standard for that council. They really love their trees, so no trees on it. It was also uh, it was on market at the time, but uh, they were taking offers beforehand. So we got involved in the conversation with the agent early. We really liked the site. So we jumped on it and uh, made an offer and managed to pick it up before auction. Yeah, nice. And this was for a client that engaged us to find them a site and then yep. manage that until completion. Just a, just an investor, yep, who wanted yeah. to get involved, didn't have the time to do it themselves, had the money, awesome. and uh, found a great site for them. Awesome. So now, I guess, you know, the fact that it's coming to life before our eyes, and how's that reserve, Gab? Like, that's probably another big box. Zooming out for that, yeah. Not only got your north-facing backyard, and, and a good backyard at that, which you'll see next week, but um, directly across the road, and you'll probably see that from the front rooms, but mm. um, also... Yeah, great for the kids and whatnot, just across the road there. Yeah, amazing. Um, so if you zoom in, you can see the front setbacks, you can see the side setbacks, everything's there for you to see. Uh, you can see that party wall down the middle, nice, you know, reasonable setback there. But I think, yeah, one of the big standouts for this one was, which we'll get into next week, but it is, they are both four betters, but the backyards, Gav, yeah. like talk to me about like the back, you know, the fact that you can have north facing, those backyards are deep really deep yeah you're like what eight meters just eight. there and that's maybe coming off the back of the alfresco yeah yeah you're spot on i reckon and i'd say more commonplace for these dual locks might be sort of four to five meters yep um but that eight meters is uh yeah a really nice outlook and sun drenched yeah lovely. and also just looking at the uh the front here easy for the second crossover very important. Yes, obviously we achieved that. Uh, Gav, can we look at the FISO? We've got a couple of the amazing community out there. You know who you are, Fisher. Fisher, you always tune in for the for the FISOs. There's a shout out, mate. Um, keep the comments coming. So we get into the fun bit, the numbers. The numbers, Gav, the spreadsheet man. So we picked up the site for 1.3 mil, which is still a great price, I think, for, for what the site is and all the boxes that it ticks. It's, it's, a, it's a great site. We'll try and, try and find that these days now. You know, yeah. obviously we're you know a fair way into the project now, but one three for a good dual lock site in one of one of Melbourne's leafy suburbs, I think it'd be hard to find. Yeah, it's a great spot between Thornbury and um, and uh, Eaglemont, so it's yeah. really leafy, quite popular. Bit of money over there too, mate. Mm. Your your kind of your kind of place, Gav. My kind of clientele. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the planning in there. About 110,000. It's probably come up a little bit since then. Um, our project management fee is in there based on the uh, construction cost. 
when we first uh, took the site on. Uh, this is actually a confirmed construction price, so it ended up coming in at around 27,000 square, which I think you'll probably get into a bit more detail next week. Yep. Um, we're looking at resales here at just under 1.8 mil. And when we bought the site, it may have been a, a little bit less than that. Uh, but there are good comps around now of not only properties that have sold, but also a couple that are on the market nearby. And they're, they're advertised for 185 to 19, maybe a slightly better location. But um, it just shows that there's money in the market for good, good property, really. And that's exactly what this is. Yeah, 100%. And I think... By the time these are ready for sale, uh, you know, for, for that four bedroom accommodation, big backyards, all that sort of stuff, I think, you know, to be in the one eights, the mid one eights, I, I, I don't think it's a stretch. Even that op, that optimistic column there, Gav, uh, yeah. to be playing around that based on the product that we are doing, which again will be next week. Stay tuned. You know, you'll see all that then. But yeah, I don't think I don't think that'd be crazy at all. Important to note on this particular FISO is it's total project value is around 3 million, mm. you know, 3.1. And that, it's very difficult to find projects that are, you know, getting returns, you know, good returns at that price now. So you, you've got a $3 million project, but you're making 400 grand uh, net profit, which is fantastic. Yeah, love it, Gav. Great project. Thanks for the, the insights. Uh, and please, guys, stick around next week. Site Insiders, if you know, you know. Australia's number one site finder, Gav. Thanks for joining us, mate. I'll see you next week. Love it, Gav. Welcome back to Project Snapshot. We've got Claire, our head of projects here, back again. Dragged her away from her circa 80 projects. She's managing downstairs. Thanks for coming back on, Claire. Thanks for having me. Nice. This is an exciting one because it is for a good client of ours, but it is a little bit different and it is in one of our um, extremely sought after leafy suburbs of Melbourne, which predominantly we don't work in we don't develop in these areas that have heritage overlays so it's nice uh, to be managing an extension renovation in Hawthorne East yeah definitely and not to mention probably quite a long planning process for the client before they came to us so we have been able to pick it up probably at a sweet spot um, where we can run with it yeah, hundred percent, and I think yeah, that's as developers, that's why we stick away from these heritage overlay areas. There's a lot of red tape to get through, uh, but yeah, the client did the heavy lifting there, um, and he's brought it to us with a change of direction. Claire, originally owner occupier set budget, we're going to do a set amount of works, and they had the scope limited somewhat to to suit their own needs, and change of direction has them now looking to maximise the outcome and then sell it on completion. Yeah, exactly right. So uh, the client before they sort of, I suppose, hit that fork in the road were let's do this portion, probably more budget driven was probably the end goal. And then over the years, we'll work on the rest of the site and the rest of the, the dwelling. And now it's, it's about selling on completion and maximising that profit. Yeah, right. Maximising that exit. So if you zoom in, as you can see, quite a sort of tightly held little pocket there. Um, you know, you can see the size of dwellings there right near the train station. Um, heritage overlay everywhere. Uh, 437 square metres of land with right-of-way access for the cars. Um, and that's a great snapshot because that's essentially what they bought, Claire, the way Land Checker shows us there. Yeah, exactly. It's a beautiful street, leafy. Uh, from what we've looked at, it's very tightly held street so a lot of owner ox these are families they're buying their forever home mm. it's not um it's it's what you'd probably say it's hard to get your comps on it gav probably wouldn't like it yeah gav would be doing his head in trying to find the comps but yeah that's a great point and these are these these really tightly held pockets of melbourne there's not high turnover in these pockets uh, they don't transact very often because people do buy them to live there for a long time so yes correct i think it doesn't help us trying to find comps but it nearly gets you excited by the fact that yeah being involved in taking something like this to market that has no supply of this type of product finished full turn key in this area it gets you confident but yeah not often the comps are there to support it exactly what i was going to say just that these ones get me more excited because there's almost endless possibilities with what the end product could be and what the end profit could be. 
but it is a little bit harder on paper to make sense of it. Yeah, correct. And I think those resales, the ceiling is it's harder to hit. It's harder to place the ceiling on something like this. When you've when you've got when you're straddled with comps everywhere, it can be great for confidence, but people won't often pay that much higher than that, depending on supply and demand and those sort of things. But to have something like this where you don't really have a ceiling um, can be exciting for someone like yourself running it and trying to, I guess, get the most out of it. Yeah, you've got to have a little bit of faith. You've got to have faith. Now, so you'll take us to the original plan from these guys and scope yeah the original scope i'll give you a quick snapshot of the plan and the overall interior mood board uh so as we said owner ock so from that land checker view what you can see is this front part that was existing they had sort of a lounge here and a small kitchen dining what the scope was previously was an extension knockdown, and all this pretty much new laundry bathroom same in terms of what we're getting just a better better design better layout we've added a study and an alfresco and larger kitchen larger kitchen and living and dining in short a few extra niceties i would say uh owner ox sort of niceties pay a bit more money but must have fall in love sort of items and then if we just jump just quickly before you go on claire so what i can get from this is really they're doing the extension and they're spending their money on the extension and like you said those those nice to have items i'm seeing curved island benches there um which just looks like money um and then they look like they're going to leave the front of the house and even leave um the sort of studio and double garage out the back and do what they can with what they've got and then like you say do that down the track so yeah there's minimal in this garage at the moment it's there is a loft there but minimal it's it's just a garage from your laneway uh i probably should have noted i jumped ahead but they have turned this into a four better the long term the plan was to turn this into a, a genuine master with a walk-in robe and an ensuite but for now they have turned this from a three better to a four better but without a genuine master yeah i'm seeing that as a concern and i'm assuming that you guys are probably going to fix that yeah hopefully uh let's jump over to the mood board this is interesting if you're doing this sort of development and well i find it interesting but this is very client specific it's personal taste it's probably very hot right now when you're selecting it. We could see it as a concern if we were going to the broader market. It's probably not something. These dark tones, these these are really expensive tiles. We probably wouldn't go that far. Or we yeah. Yeah, and no, I see what you're saying there. I, you know, I can't say I don't like it, but yeah, I can see how it's more of a personal touch. And especially if it's got price tags attached to it, then it becomes a risk. Um so yeah, so a change in direction there is probably warranted. Yeah, to be honest, I, I actually love it. I think it's great and it's quite a beautiful design, but to go out to the broader market with it, it's probably not a safe play. A little bit niche, yeah, understand. Okay, we're going to jump to the new scope, the new plans. New scope, new plans. Okay, here is here's the snapshot of what we've done. There's a lot going on, so we might just talk through this from maybe top to bottom. Um, of what we've added and why we've added it. So you'll see exactly what we were talking about before. This has now become a genuine master master bedroom. So we've got our walk-in robe, our ensuite. We've got our two bedrooms. I suppose the biggest point here is that we're a three-bedroom uh, house, which is which is what it was when it was purchased originally. But we saw an opportunity in the garage to add a fourth bedroom and a studio so bathroom with a shower genuine bathroom a kitchenette a spiral staircase that still allows two cars to get in and then a simple layout on bed uh sorry a simple layout up the top but everything that could be a studio or a bed probably let's say 60 to eighty thousand dollars worth of upgrade but i'm not sure what that's worth in hawthorne east yeah, for sure. I think, and I remember, you know, you and I talking this through early when we took on the job. Obviously, uh, the goal and, you know, I guess our scope of works and what we're being judged upon is we need to maximise this exit for the client. And as soon as we saw that double garage with studio above, it was sort of we need to put some effort 
and money into this space for that to be a double garage, brand new kitchenette, toilet, powder, bathroom downstairs, and then upstairs is a massive, massive bedroom, studio, gym, home office, home business, whatever it, however it suits anyone, and sort of direct access from that laneway. It was just it, yeah. It just screamed, um, you know, appeal for the right buyer. So yeah, super excited with with that rear offering. I think the biggest thing we discussed when we took on this project is let's say the contract, build a contract I'm talking about, currently at 750. It's a lot of money. So the question is, do we push on with the current scope and get to market and sell it and see what the end result is? Or do we put in circa 300,000 to have a fully shiny brand new product, everything included? And while you may think 300000 is a lot of money, genuinely more risk in not doing that because you've got a half, a half completed project. So whoever is taking on that project is doing the landscaping. Even if, even if we leave out the added value of the garage, these rooms and these elements at the front and the exterior, they need work to match the quality of that extension, which the clients were going to do over time. But whoever takes that on is now a home reno job for the next few years. Yeah, correct. And I think that just narrows down your marketplace. I think whenever you're going to market, you want, you know, as much competition and as much demand on your product uh, as possible. And I think, yeah, to to continue on the path they're on would obviously be quite personalized to them and and shut out a lot of that market. But to to now do this, to have that have that, you know, amazing it's it's nearly a single bedroom self contained unit. Uh, on the back laneway there, which, like you say, in these type of suburbs, how much is that worth? You know, how long is a piece of string? Could be worth anything. But then also updating the front part of the house, which brings a master into play. I'm not sure how you fetch big numbers without delivering uh, the buyers a master. The two bedrooms, uh, you know, its own home office, study, separate laundry, um, you know, bathroom servicing, uh, your two smaller beds there. And an amazing architecturally designed extension. So yeah, I feel like what you guys have been able to do and even like you said, spending that extra 300,000 means that you can offer it to a bigger part of, bigger cross section of the market as possible to create that interest and competition. And that's how you get the big results, isn't it? You have a product that's all ready to go, landscaping done, come in, nothing more to do. Yeah, exactly. And and we probably should touch on, it's not that we didn't work with comps at all. Like we sat there for hours going through comps. It's just that street as a whole, there's not one next to it that we could comfortably say it's a like for like. A lot of these places, like we said, have either been owned for 30 or 40, 50 years, and then they've been renovated or they're unrenovated. So there were definitely comps. It was just pushing out a few blocks out. Yeah, correct. It's, yeah, sort of... In these areas, sometimes you need to draw a parallel between locations and size and spec and uh, offering and all those sorts of things. So, yeah, like, yeah, you know, I agree with what you're saying. There's definitely comps, but you just need to draw a longer bow to to sort of achieve your numbers. Um, But less less of a ceiling in these in these suburbs if you get it right and the market's ticking along and like i've probably said a couple of times this will be sort of later this year looking to sell and hopefully a more more positive uh, marketplace with a couple of interest rate cuts should hopefully see it go well for the client yeah definitely and would you i suppose this is probably more a question but i believe in these areas that to make that profit quickly, you have to give something because you've bought really well, the suburb's great, but probably the the growth in this area is not, it's probably more stable, Yeah. but it's there if you add the value in. Yeah, 100%, like these blue chip suburbs, uh, because no one wants to go the, you know, the hard way around, you know, and, and we're essentially doing that on behalf of our client is going the hard way around, dealing with your builders, your trades, our clients dealt with council, all those sorts of things. No, sorts of things no one wants to do. So to to get through all that, to get through all the hurdles and the headaches, and and have an amazing offering at the end, that margin lives there for that for that person. Because and, and also this buyer, this buyer is not going to be an investor. It's going to be an owner occupier that's going to live there for the next decade or so. So those people have deeper pockets, and it less needs to stack up from an investment point of view. It just needs to connect with them emotionally, which which we feel like um, are on the right track with that. 
Yeah, definitely. Now, before we wrap this up, I just want to show you our updated mood board. So when we took over this project, we were pouring the slab. So at slab stage, so we had a lot of opportunity to increase scope, yes, but also peel it back where we needed to. And I think that's that's a really important play to this. We've You'll see now it's a toned down palette. You've still got dramatic, beautiful features, but we're talking to a wide, wider, wider market. And also those niceties I talk about, the feature curved stone, we peel that back and we make it more simple. Still getting the end result, but just not putting money in where we're not going to get it back. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And those commercial decisions that that obviously we make inside this building, I think that's the, one of the main reasons the client came to us is we can make those commercial decisions, not spend too much, not overcapitalize, definitely not undercapitalize in an area like this uh, and just make sure they're getting bang for buck at every corner. Yeah, exactly. Now, I just want to show you a perspective of the extension just to give you a shot of what you are getting I think that's in Hawthorne East. Yeah. And, and for me and where you're about to take us, you know, looking at the comps and those sorts of things, I didn't see any comps that had something as exciting as this, brand new, first owner type vibes um, in the comp. So that's, for me, that's what's exciting for us and our investor. And I think that's where you have to sort of have that little bit of faith. Yes, the numbers aren't clear on paper, but when you look around, this is, there's not a lot of this, that this is scarce. 100%. I didn't see a comp with this because anyone who's doing that is doing it and they're living it themselves. They're not selling it to anyone else. So that's just that tightly held um, you know, scenario that's happening out there in, in these sort of heritage areas of Melbourne. So that's exciting. And that's – you talk to a lot – you would, I do. You talk to a lot of people who aren't in this industry. They would rather put an extra $600,000 on their mortgage than deal with $300,000 of risk with a builder. Yeah, for sure, 100%. It's, it's, and, and that's a good point. It takes away the risk as well. They can go in, they can touch and feel, this is what I get, all approvals are done, they've got building warranties, insurances, all in place. Uh, and now more than ever, to have that full turnkey, uh, people pay a premium. Yeah, this is... I. I am excited about this. Yeah, so am I. And I think, stay tuned, but I think we would, uh, we'll would definitely deliver some content when it's finished, uh, when it's looking to sell, all those sorts of things. We'll bring you guys feedback on what the team's achieved uh, and look to deep dive into this. But that will be later on this year. Claire, thanks for coming on and giving us an insight into something that is a little bit different to Little Fish, but still in the same, same world as bringing value to property putting a dollar in and getting two back there you go there you have it claire head of projects little fish dropping gold but no thanks claire we'll see you again next week excited to see how this comes out please guys continue watching continue interacting we love the questions as you can see we're getting to all of you if you guys have any topics that you want to share please drop them in there ask us questions uh, we'll be back again next week like share subscribe happy developing